I've been thinking a lot about what it means to lose something lately, for a few obvious reasons and a few more personal ones. About how while we all adapt and deal with loss in different ways, no one is actually well equipped to handle it. And because my brain is very well functioning, I keep coming back to anime while I lay awake at night pondering about these things. In this case, it's often been everyone's favorite shonen romp, Naruto. A show that I do actually think handles the concept of death better than many other shows I've watched. The scene I can't get out of my head is a fairly important one from episode 133, A Plea from a Friend. While Naruto has Sasuke pinned up against the wall trying to talk sense into him, Sasuke says this. He then goes on to say that it's his ties to the past that cause the real pain, and that Naruto could never understand what it feels like to lose something like that. It's the first time in the entire fight Sasuke really breaks character and shows his true emotions, and is far more powerful after the three episodes of backstory that precede it. Naruto responds with one of the more heartfelt lines in the entire show, about how yes, he may not know what having a family is like, but he'd like to think the way he feels around Iruka is how he would feel around a father, and Sasuke, a brother. I think in the heat of the moment, most of us would side with Naruto here. Loss is loss no matter the context, and playing the my trauma is worse than yours card is awful and I wish people would stop doing it. And if we are playing that game, the trauma of not having parents, a real childhood, and being despised by most of the village is probably equal if not worse. But there's some merit to what Sasuke says, or at least I can easily see how he reaches his conclusion. The power and trauma behind losing something or someone is generally tied to the amount of care and love you put in, or to simplify it, the amount of positive memories you hold. As the show so often puts it, your bond. For Naruto, at this point, he has zero connections to his parents, no knowledge of what could have been. It's still a loss, but it's one that's been a fact of life for him since the day he was born. He is simply using similar bonds to create an imagined experience. One that is easier to accept because he has nothing to compare it to. It is easier to replace nothing than something. For Sasuke, he has those parental memories. He knows what life would be like with his family and his clan and yearns to be able to return to that in some way, shape, or form. This then manifests itself in far more outright constant pain than it does for Naruto, who is able to begin to fill that void. This pain is then something that Sasuke unfortunately turns into lust for revenge. He himself even says during this fight that his life is forever stuck in the past, while we obviously know Naruto as the one who's always looking towards his Hokage future. All of this then begs the question, which is worse? Loss from the start, or loss further down the line? Or I suppose to put it more eloquently, which is worse, loss or absence? I don't think there's a right answer here. I really don't and to say it's personal preference would be morbid and unkind at best. But there's certainly something so personal about a conversation like this. And if I can be self-indulgent for a second, I want to go on a tangent. A few months ago, my maternal grandfather passed away at the age of 90. Even reading this sentence out loud right now continues to bring vast amounts of pain. I don't want to go into detail, and I also don't want to turn this video into an obituary, but just know that he had the special gift of making every grandchild feel like they were his favorite. He greatly influenced the person I am today, and I considered him like a second father. He lived an incredibly long and fulfilling life surrounded by family, and I miss him immensely. My brain hasn't really functioned the same the past few months, and while I'm sure the pandemic has something to do with it, I think we really don't realize the effect a loss like this has on the core of our person. Everyone goes through the stages of grief, and at the end of it you have to reach acceptance to move on. But that doesn't mean the person who's entered at stage 1 is the same one who's exiting at stage 5. Now I want to be very clear here that I'm not trying to elicit pity or show how bad my year was, just that this is mostly why I started thinking about this topic at all to begin with. And that I think personal experiences are crucial to any conversation about trauma and death. This is also where the world of fiction and real life sharply split. Knowing you're going to lose a character ahead of time softens that blow and lets you not get too attached. In real life, if such a knowledge were possible, it would only bring more pain and anguish. 
alongside a feeling of regret and sadness. I always found the prospect of going back in time and becoming a kid again, but with all my current knowledge, very appealing. But nowadays, I loathe it. It really is amazing how much our own changing life experiences affect us, not only in our day-to-day -day lives, but how we consume and react to our own media. It's why the beginning of Jujutsu Kaisen with Yuji and his grandfather was such a powerful scene for me, while others derided it for being lazy. My own very recent loss helped strengthen that scene, while for someone else more distant, they could easily see it more as an early series storytelling beat. It's also how I landed on the particular Naruto scene I referenced earlier. And to return to the ninja-based topic at hand, so many of the most impactful scenes in the series are centered around death and bonds. Zabuza and Haku, Naruto learning about Jiraiya, and the one that wrecked me the most personally, the release of the reanimation jutsu on Minato. The only thing more cruel than losing someone is coming to terms with it and then having to lose them again. All of these thoughts have also sort of reconciled a plot point that I've disliked for years, where Sasuke's response to learning about why Itachi did what he did is to try and undo that work and destroy the village. At first glance, it seems counterintuitive and childish, and in some ways, it is. But for someone whose life has been racked with death and despair, learning that all that could have been avoided if not for the higher-ups in the village is traumatic enough that I can see why he would go against his brother's intentions. Particularly for someone whose coping mechanism for their entire life has been deflection and revenge. There are countless more examples of how painful the loss of a bond can be, from death or otherwise, and from so many of these, it would be easy to come to the conclusion that Sasuke is right, and having a strong bond severed is clearly more painful than the absence of one. But what that's leaving out is that you still have all those great memories that made that bond so special in the first place. You know the old saying, it is better to have loved than lost than to have never loved at all. This is where the question I posed earlier truly becomes unanswerable. I think you can say that a loss later on causes far more immediate pain, but it also doesn't elicit as many hollow questions of what life could have been like. To turn back to me for a second, I lost my paternal grandfather when I was just seven years old, and since I was so young, it was harder to understand and far less traumatic than last year was. I have significantly fewer memories of him though, and am often left wishing we could have spent more time together. And while the past few months have been rough, would I trade away the pain I've been feeling for fewer personal memories? Hell no. Not in a million years. And I think that's where I fall on this debate, so to speak. Stronger bonds create far more painful breaks, but they also provide far more happy memories in the meantime. Absence causes more of a dull ache than a sharp pain, but gives you nothing to look back on fondly. Your only real choice is to ignore or replace. So if I had to pick a side here, personally, ignoring all extenuating circumstances and eventual outcomes, I think Naruto's version of loss here is harder than Sasuke's. Or at least if forced to choose, I would prefer being given time to create bonds rather than never have them. Now, no personal loss is equal, and in no way do I think my experiences stack up against anyone else's, or the ones in Naruto, certainly not Sasuke's. But I feel the only way to form an opinion on what Sasuke says is to use one's own life as a guide. As we roll into Naruto one final time, I think it's important to point out that coping mechanisms and outside influences are just as, if not more important in how much of an effect a loss has on your being. So, if you want your brother to live a normal life, maybe don't send them on a lifelong quest for revenge fueled by hatred because you think it'll protect him by making him stronger and also serve as some sort of weird penance for your sins. Just a thought. I'll end my ramble on this. While I started out kind of wanting to come to an actual conclusion on the topic of loss, I'm left believing that what Sasuke said was right, but also that how Naruto responded was right as well. While we all connect through shared experiences, the only person that can truly understand the specific nature of your loss is you. A lot of us lost a lot of really important things last year, and know that it's okay to take time to reflect and remember that. And as we move into a brand new, hopefully better year, let's also take time to appreciate and cherish everything that we do still have.